So Carrie, any other issues with the unit uh, that you've come across so far? Yeah, there are three things that I have noticed as the unit has aged. Hello everyone and welcome back to our next video. So today we get a chance to talk to Carrie again. So Carrie, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me again. So for a lot of you out there, you know that Carrie and I did a video uh, over a year ago that was all about her mini split AC unit and her installation of it and, and so forth. So what we're gonna talk about now is we're gonna get an update. You've used it now for how long? I have had it installed on my van for a year and a half. Okay, so for after a year and a half, we're gonna now find out what was good, what was bad uh, and things like that. So uh, Carrie, first thing, can you remind us what the system is again? Yeah. So. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I installed what's known as a 12 volt backpack mini split unit, which means that there's a piece that goes on the back of the van, which I mounted on a piece of board and attached it to the back of my uh, sheet metal on the door. And I also have a head unit. That's the split piece of it because there's an outside unit, the inside head unit, and it's it all runs on a 12 volt solar system. And again, what's your solar system that you have? Uh, currently, and then maybe we can tell us what your recommendations are for minimums. Right, so I have a pretty big system that's even been expanded since I last spoke with you guys. I have 600 watts of hard-sided solar panels installed on my roof. I have 900 amp hours of lithium, wow. which is a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and then since the last interview, I have also inst I've also acquired an additional 600 watts of flexible solar panels. These are also known as deployables. These uh, I acquired specifically with the intention of being able to like sustainably boondock with this AC unit. Oh, very good. So what would you say is the minimum system requirement? Because you have a very uh, large system. Uh, what would you say the minimum would be for from your needs that you've noticed? So for my purposes, I can run my solar system indefinitely with everything that I did. Even if I didn't have those de deployable panels, mm -hmm. I could run it sustainably for three or four days even. Oh, wow. The minimum, if someone wants to run it um, during for one day, I would say the minimum would be probably 200 amp hours of lithium. Okay. Lithium means that you can use 100% of that capacity. And I would say at least three or 400 watts of solar. Okay, and with that, you'd just be using occasionally, you wouldn't be able to have it on all the time. Well, I mean, our friend uh, down in Baja that I learned about these units mm -hmm. from has a Malamute <laughs> oh, and he right. left it in, he left and the dog was very comfortable. He kept it at 80 degrees in the van and that, and it ran continuously. He only had 200 amp hours of lithium and the 300 watts of solar on his roof. Oh, so, and again, if, because you're going to be doing it during the day, the heat of the day, that's when the sun is out. So you are hopefully not losing a lot of your battery mm -hmm. uh, capacity during right. the time. And a lot of, and a lot of the difference is you, if you put insulated panels or at least reflectix in your windows, that does, of that course. makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. I have a thermal, thermal curtain that I put in front of my cab. I also have a lot, I don't have windows in the back specifically. And so that is the best insulated part of my uh, van. My nice. back windows are insulated. So it, uh, it's going to depend entirely on what types of temperatures are you keeping it in? How well insulated is your van? Are you, are your big windows parked in the shade? A lot of these things can, can come into play. Now, this is not your first foray into the uh, air conditioning options, right? Nope. <laughs> okay. So how do you compare it to all the other ones that you've had in the past? So we'll get to the punchline. I love this. Every day that I use it, I appreciate it more and more. And so for you, it's been a thumbs up. Absolutely. But why don't you tell us a little bit about the different conditions you've had it in and how it's held up to that test? So I have nothing but good things to say about this unit, frankly. I got it for about 700 bucks two years ago with no review, so I was a little skeptical at the time. Of course. But I have, no, you know, two thumbs up. I have spent time in Tucson where it was 106 degrees for about two weeks. Oh, wow. I was staying in my van. Granted, I was plugged in at the time, so I want to be very clear, I wasn't boondocking in these conditions. And it kept my cab very comfortable during the day. Um, one interesting thing that I noticed was that it, and this was actually a recommendation that was in the comments of the last video, is that if you park with the refrigerant lines in the shade, it makes a tremendous difference. They're black rubber and they're exposed. Mm -hmm. um, and so the difference between 106 and keeping it 85 in my rig, which is fine, but not exactly comfortable. Mm -hmm. As soon as I turned my van around and made sure that it was in the shade, um, it was 106 outside. 
and again, this is shade temp, <laughs> yeah. 106 in the shade. Oof. And it was um, about 75 ambient temperature in my van when I actually shaded the unit itself, not just the entire van, but specifically the unit the itself. Unit lines. So, so it was consistently good, even in those 100 plus temps, for a differential of at least 20 degrees. That's huge. I mean, in a lot of us, we go to higher elevations, you know, during the summer or go north, uh, but sometimes you're forced to be, you know, for whatever reason, you're forced to be in these temperatures. Uh, and so that is a really good option. Another thing that I would add is this allowed me, instead of having to like choose places that mm -hmm. were, you know, really before I had the mini split, I had to, as soon as temperatures started getting up into 82, 83, 84 as a consistent high, I had to hightail it to higher elevation. I had to go, and sometimes that means True. sprinting across multiple states to get from, let's say, Flagstaff up to a place of higher elevation and being farther north, right? True. And because I work, I didn't always have that option. Now, I don't really even concern myself if it's going to be 95 or below because I know for guaranteed through the course of an entire work day, I can be my pets and I can be safe and comfortable and my solar will maintain with yeah. the 600 watts. It'll maintain temp very, very well. And that's, that's so important because a lot of us do travel with pets. And so we, it's always in the back of our mind being, making sure they have a safe place. Yeah. So Carrie, are, are there any things that you want the people watching this video to know about the system? Yeah. So there are a lot of really great questions in the comments section of the last video. So I've actually compiled a couple of those more popular questions and was hoping to provide some insight on those. Oh, that'd be great. So as an example, a lot of people pe asked about the weight of the unit. The shipping weight and delivery weight of the unit was about 60 pounds. My van has a GVWR or total weight rating of a, almost 9,000 pounds. So the 60 pounds really hasn't been an impact. I have way more weight in bikes <laughs> than I do in that particular AC unit. There were some other questions about what refrigerant it uses. I mistakenly said it uses Freon in the past video. It actually uses a standard automotive refrigerant that you can pick up almost anywhere. One of the interesting things about the installation that I would like to emphasize is that it actually has automotive fittings on it. And so the very last step to install it, once you've got it mounted, you've got everything hooked up, you need to take it to an AC specialist, an automotive AC specialist to complete the installation. Sure. Also some questions about how noisy is it? I don't have a decibel meter to measure it, but I would say it's only marginally louder than my Max Air fan on high. There's no extra noise in the van. I will comment on some of the noise on the outside that I've acquired over the last year and a half, but so far the noise that I had on original install is very consistent with the noise that I have now, even a year and a half later. One other question that I thought was really interesting was about horizontal installation. Oh yeah. I actually couldn't find anything in the documentation for my particular unit about horizontal installation, but there were a number of people in the last year that co made comments that said they had installed it in a horizontal manner. So while I can't specifically say that is safe. Looks like other people have done it. The last question that came up was, does this unit have the capacity to heat? My unit doesn't. There are other units on the market now that actually have that dual capacity. I've had heat pumps in the past and they just haven't really been adequate for my uses. So I opted to do without that particular feature. But if you do a little bit more due diligence and searching, you can find those units for not too much more expensive than the cooling only units. So Carrie, to your knowledge, are there any things that you need to do for maintenance for the system? I haven't needed to do anything so far. As with most cooling systems, it's really prudent to make sure that your refrigerant levels are intact. And because when we're driving around in vans, it's a little bit like a really bad earthquake, depending on how you drive <laughs> on some of these roads, I would encourage everyone to routinely inspect the refrigerant lines to make sure that they're not leaking, that they're actually staying um they're fixed in there real well. Similar to checking the fittings on the back of your AC unit, it's also a really good idea for any electrical system to just go in there, make sure that all of your screws and bolts and fittings on your electrical system are really tight. Loose fittings can can cause fires. So Carrie, you've, you've told us all the positive things about the unit and that you love it. Are there any negatives or things that we should uh, know about? Yeah, so there was a, a comment that came up a lot, which was to remove the thermostat from the unit and move it external so that it would balance temperature a little bit better. Unfortunately, there isn't an easy way to move the thermostat away from the unit. And so we still kind of have that problem where one side of the van might be a different temp, whereas the AC unit in the back is gonna maintain it. So you could have a differential in the van of about 10 degrees. The other thing is on this particular unit, 
the buttons up there have temperature down and speed up. I misplaced this once. <laughs> uh -huh. And so the controls on that allow you to turn the fan up and the temp down and not the other way around. Uh, that's just a questionable design decision on, in my opinion. So you actually have to have, you can't lose this. And there, it, there doesn't seem to be an easy way to replace it. So if you want full control of the unit, you need to be able to keep track of the remote. So Carrie, any other issues with the unit uh, that you've come across so far? Yeah, there are three things that are really not a big deal at all, but that I have noticed as the unit has aged. One, the shroud has turned this vibrant yellow color. I'll probably do a Plasti Dip or something later this season just to offset <laughs> the discoloration from the sun. Um, two, although it's not doing it right now while it's on max, fan and max cooling. Sometimes you'll get a really high pitched whine. It could just be dust in the belts. I'm not entirely sure. It really doesn't seem to affect the performance of the unit at all. And then the last unit, again, just a comment about um, some of the pieces, these screws, these mounting screws that put the shroud on the frame of the unit are starting to rust a little bit. Um, I'm not terribly concerned about it, but it still just doesn't look great cosmetically. Now, when you talk about the noise that it makes, can you hear that from inside the van or just on the outside? Actually, no, that's the most interesting thing is that the occasional squeal that comes from this unit, maybe from one of the belts, I can't hear it in the van at all and I could sleep just fine with it. Okay, so it's mostly that it's creating noise outside your van for other people. Exactly. So there were some additional questions about how I mounted it and how it's holding up. As you may remember from the past video, I put three-ply plywood and treated it with some outdoor paint so that it'll be a little resistant to the, to the elements. And actually, this has held up great. I was really surprised. And then on the inside of the van, I have three or I have five bolts that hold it in place. And really, this unit hasn't moved at all. I'm very, very happy with the installation. Is it worth it? What is the cost benefit for you? Frankly, a year and a half in, it's been nothing but benefits. I've been down to Tucson in 100 plus temps. I've been able to take it up to Flagstaff. I've had my van sitting for hours in hot asphalt parking lots while I'm taking four hours of meetings. And this unit has not failed me once. And so for the investment, it's, you think it's absolutely worth it? Absolutely. And over the last year, I've had at least half a dozen of my friends install similar units. And again, these are for similar reasons. People who work, who might not have as much flexibility in terms of where they go. They might be city dwellers, as an example. So anyone that doesn't have full flexibility of their schedule, I mean, for $1,000, and I checked the price right before this, it's still around seven or $800 to get this specific unit. Add to that $100 worth of materials on top of that, and maybe another $100 to complete the installation with an AC Automotive Specialist. For $1,000, you have really amazing cooling capacity. And so much more freedom. Absolutely, and that's really, that's really what this lifestyle is all about, isn't it? It's really about having the most autonomy and the most flexibility of where you can travel. This only gives us more options. Carrie, thank you so much for giving us a real life uh, breakdown of what it's been like over the last year and a half of using your unit. Uh, you know, we, we love the information from the first video and now to see it in use after a year and a half has been so beneficial. Um, any last minute things that you want to mention about the unit? No, really, I was a little skeptical when I bought it with zero reviews, of course. but it has exceeded all of my expectations. I have zero regrets about buying it. And even if at some point the unit itself fails and I need to replace parts of it, they're all pretty readily available. I can mm -hmm. ideally not buy an entirely different unit itself, but because it's automotive components, it would be pretty easy to maintain. So. Again, I have really very few uh, negative things to say about it and a lot of really good things to say about this unit. So you definitely recommend this unit? 100%. So folks out there, if you haven't seen the video that we did over a year ago, please go ahead and check it out. We'll have a link in the description, but it will tell you all about the requirements, the installation. We'll go really in depth into that video. So if you have any questions, you can always refer to that video. This video is more about just the review after a year and a half and real life experiences. Uh, so I hope that you guys got some great information from this. Carrie, once again, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Yep, I'm glad I was able to share my mind with everyone. <laughs> now, if you guys got anything out of the video today, please give it a big thumbs up. 
subscribe to the channel, share it with friends, and until next time, we'll see you down the road. So long, and stay cool. Stay cool. Stay cool. <laughs> stay stay cool, cool out there. there. <laughs> We're actually gonna do the whole interview where we are just reading off our phones. Oh, I and, think that's um, a great yeah, idea. So I'm gonna text you right now. Okay, uh, on the phone sometimes. <laughs> Thank you for your, thank you for your, um, <laughs> allyship.